2019 was a great year of anime. We got so many good shows and a lot of underground shows that people didn't see. But there was one that kind of popped up on the radar because of a controversial first episode. That anime is called Goblin Slayer. Now, I just recently finished watching the dub of this series and I wanted to talk about it. I'm the noob. Come along with me as we talk about this series. Now, I am going to put a warning out. We are going to be talking about Goblin Slayer, which has what a lot of people started to consider some very bad things. But, I don't agree with them, and I'll tell you why. But first, let's start off with the basic concept of Goblin Slayer. Goblin Slayer is set up basically like a story that you would get from a D&D &D game. You have your main characters going out on adventures, doing quests, and coming home. Now yes, I know this sounds like your basic fantasy anime, which this basically is. Now your story mainly revolves around two main characters of this story, Goblin Slayer and the Priestess. Later on, they are joined by several other adventurers. These adventurers include a high elf archer, a dwarf shaman, and a lizard priest. But there are several other characters that you will see throughout this series that are regulars, such as cowgirl, guild girl, witch, spearman, and later on in the series, sword maiden. Now the first thing you may notice about these characters is that they do not have any names. As I stated previously, this game is roughly based like a D&D &D game. The creator of this manga and anime, Kumo Kagiwa, has said in many interviews that he wanted to do a story based off of Dungeons and Dragons. And this is what came out of it. Now, each character is very unique in their own way. Goblin Slayer by the title that he goes by, is someone who is known for taking adventures that only deal with slaying goblins. Then you have the Priestess, a character who was saved by Goblin Slayer and eventually decided to start working with him. Now later on, the group that joins him uh, later, the Elf, the Dwarf, and the Lizard, they all were looking for Goblin Slayer because he was very well known and they wanted him to help them kill goblins before this big war because the demon king has come back but we're not focusing on that big thing a lot of the episodes deal with goblin slayer and his group going out on quests from the guild about killing goblins or slaying goblins now of course there is a controversy that some people do have which i don't agree with and that is the very first episode in the very first episode, you don't even see Goblin Slayer for the first half. You actually are following the young priestess who has just become an adventurer. She's still very new to the guild and she joins up with this other party who decides to take on the Goblin Slaying. Now the issue that people are having with this episode is because there's a lot of death and there is implied rape. Now when I say implied, you don't see anything. The only stuff that you see is clothes getting ripped off of one of the female adventures and a lot of goblins surrounding her and her being in a position where it looks like something could happen. But that's the thing that I'm having an issue with. Nothing is shown. Yet people are taking it as rape. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, they probably did rape her in this, but it sh does not show anything. I have seen more etchy material in High School DxD and Berserk than I have in Goblin Slayer. So for anyone to get uppity about this, I'm a little concerned and I think people should get over it, but that is just my opinion. But let us continue on. In the first episode, like a lot of things happen, and then Goblin Slayer shows up and basically saves the priestess. There was one other character, the one that may have been raped, that was saved, but you could see that she was psychologically damaged at the end of this because her whole party died. She may have been raped and things happened. But the thing about this anime is you can literally skip that first episode and not have any issues. So for anyone who's thinking about getting into this series that has heard about this controversy, if you don't 
want to watch this part, if you're squeamish, if you're a special snowflake that's out there, you can go ahead and skip this episode. It's not going to really matter. Episode 2 picks up right afterwards and you barely notice any difference. Now the one thing I do like about this series is the main character Goblin Slayer. He is, as his title says, a Goblin Slayer. He does not go out looking for dragons. He's not out here to slay a demon lord. He is here for goblins and nothing else. The first interaction that the High Elf, the Dwarf, and the Lizard have with Goblin Slayer, they are talking to him about a demon lord that was going to be coming out and how there's going to be a big battle. And he literally says, I don't give a care. They're not goblins. This is... I like this type of character because he knows he has a certain purpose. He's not here to be the hero. He knows from previous experience, goblins are a bad thing. A lot of adventures don't take him seriously and it causes issues. So he is here to kill goblins and nothing else. Now the one thing you may have noticed is there is actually a lot of females around Goblin Slayer, but there is actually no harem in this, which is kind of odd because some of these ladies are mwah, fine ladies, but Goblin Slayer is very focused. I mean, there's the priestess who you could tell as she continues journeying with him, does come to care for him. I don't know if it's a love thing or if it's just wanting to take care of him, but she cares for him a lot. The high elf is Sundere. I don't care what anyone says. She acts like she hates him for what he does, but there's a small smidgen of she actually kind of likes him, but that doesn't matter. There's cowgirl, which is the friend. Every anime's got the childhood friend. She's the childhood friend. But other than her living in the same area that he does, I find her kind of useless. There's the sword maiden who comes in uh, about halfway through the series. And she's, um, mm, she's fine. But she's been traumatized. She has dealt with goblins. She has been a victim of goblins. And now she can't protect. So she has a mutual respect for Goblin Slayer. And that's kind of interesting. But the character who I really like for this story. Who I think really has the leading edge of loving Goblin Slayer. Seems to be the receptionist girl. The guild girl. Now you can tell she actually fancies him because... Every time that he comes into the guild, she immediately notices. When there's a goblin adventure quest, she always is making sure that she finds him to let him know. And at the end, when he takes off his helmet, which he does not do throughout the whole series, except for one time. And that's when he almost died and they took it off of him, but no one got to see his face. She was... She made sure that she got through the crowd to see what he looked like. And let's face it, she pretty much thought he was hot by the look of it. I like the way this story was done. There was not this grand, I'm the hero, I need to save the world kind of thing. I'm tired of watching animes where your main protagonist is the one to save the world. Goblin Slayer is just there to kill goblins, protect his small section of the world, and be done with it. This is a good anime. If you want to see a fantasy anime that is done like a video game, where you go to an adventure guild, you get a quest, you go out and complete the quest, you come back, you get paid. That's this kind of anime. And if that's the kind of story you enjoy, I suggest you watch Goblin Slayer. If you can get over that small little bit of stuff in the first episode, watch it. If not, go to episode two. But I recommend that you watch this anime. Folks, I'm the noob. I thank you for joining me on this, and I'll catch y'all next time. See ya!